Welcome to the Daily Brief, where I'll go over the highlights for the action in the market for Friday, November 25th, and then see how things look for Monday, November 28th. And not surprisingly, it was a slow day. We really didn't move all that much on a closing basis, and the daily range was quite tight. So really not much has changed since the last update. I hope everybody had a really good Thanksgiving and maybe an enjoyable Black Friday. And that's the thing I don't understand. Aren't all Fridays important? What's so special about this Black Friday? Hmm. Okay. Anyway, that was a poor attempt at a joke. But let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we did have a lower open. Not much. It was pretty muted. Even the futures were not trading all that much before the market opened. There was no economic reports that came out, so there was very little to go on. Plus, a lot of people were away enjoying Black Friday and Thanksgiving, of course. As the day went on, prices just drifted above and below the unchanged level in the shortened session that we had. We closed a number of hours earlier than usual. We closed down just 0.03% virtually unchanged on the day, but a little bit lower. The interesting thing about this, when we have a lower close, no matter where it's at, that shifts some of our indicators around. And it hasn't really changed all that much, but we're still in that overbought situation. But some of the indicators tick down just slightly, just because of the negative close. Volume was really below average. Friday was the least volume day of all because it's been a holiday week. We'll have to see. Next week when people come back, is volume going to pick up? Is there going to be more conviction in the market to take it either higher or lower? Or are we just going to continue to chop sideways? Now our ADX, and I'll show you here in just a moment, it has gone back above 20 and the green line's on top. So that is positive. But now we need to see, can volume come in? Can there be some real conviction either way to drive the market up or down? The technicals, they're still positive overall, even with the slight down day, even with the holiday low volume, we're still hanging in there as far as our charts are concerned. Inflation and interest rates are what the market continues to really fixate on. We did have some Fed speak earlier in the week when the FOMC meeting minutes came out and they were taken as positive. The midterm elections, it's pretty much over, but there's still a few areas. We have another runoff coming up in Georgia on the 6th of December, I believe it is. We haven't really heard much about the Iran-Saudi situation and North Korea. That's kind of drifted out of the news lately as well with them firing the missile towards Japan. Here's the daily chart, and it's a lot less than usual just because of the shortened day where we did have a little bit of a lower open. We went slightly positive, only to go back negative, only to go positive, only to go along the unchanged level, <coughs> and then end up finishing down in the session just a little bit. This chart had it down 0.02%. The chart, the other chart that I look at said 0.03%, just minuscule anyway. So what are some comments that we can make? They're really having some issues again in China with the COVID lockdowns. And so just a couple of weeks back, we were talking about how China may be lessening this policy. And now we're at a point where we're seeing massive lockdowns, especially in Shanghai, the capital city. But in addition to that, China also announced some stimulus measures and what they did, this is kind of their version of lowering interest rates. They had a 25 basis point cut in the require, required reserve ratio for most of the banks that deal with China or in China. And this will help to increase liquidity, and that'll be starting on December 5th. So we still have another week for that to come in. Now, China's not a real big influence on the U.S. markets, but as the economy is turning more and more global, we're seeing China coming more and more into the field as far as having an impact, especially with the companies in the U.S. that do a lot of business in China. The dollar was up slightly and interest rates rose just a little bit. 
And on a short-term basis, we still have our McClellan oscillator. That's extreme positive. The stochastic studies, both the short, intermediate, and long-term chart. But again, I take that whole chart and treat it as short-term. The Stoke RSI, the Williams percent R, the same things that are pretty touchy to price movement. They still remain extreme positive. In the intermediate term, some of our moving averages, especially the, the shorter term, the 20 and the 50, they are getting into extreme positive territory and have been there for a while now. A lot of our PMO studies, the BPIs, just barely into extreme positive territory, and the CCI 20. We didn't see much of a change with the muted price action in Friday's session, so a lot of this list that you saw in the last video, we still have in this video as well. We still have all of our yield curves that I follow that are inverted. Sentiment is still positive. It ticked down like one tick or so. We're not extreme. So we're treating this more as positive. And that's what we do with sentiment. When we use it as a contrary indication, it's usually when it's extreme pessimistic or extreme optimistic. Well, right now it's just optimistic. And so we can kind of go with that as far as sentiment is concerned. We didn't have any economic reports that came out. In our trend, it's positive. We've gone back above 20. It's getting stronger. We're above the moving average. Our bias, I still, even though we had the 0.03% down day, I'm still keeping it as positive because it was virtually unchanged. So then I'm defaulting back to Wednesday's action. And our momentum is still positive. We'll have to see when everybody comes back is, are we going to build on this or are we going to run into some problems and end up going sideways or even decline? Here's the chart that I've been showing. Haven't been able to find an updated version at least yet, but the green line here, this is comparing 2006 through 2008 with what the S&P 500 did during that time. And the white chart here, just shows how we've been very closely tied to that throughout this latest set of problems, especially in the 2022, where we've seen a real choppy to declining market for the year. Are we going to go ahead and follow this pattern and see some weakness going into the end of the year? Or are we going to finally break away from this same basic model here and shoot more to the upside. We're also keeping an eye on the VIX, which really it, it's been declining. So it's getting more complacent now. If you take this and then shift it 12 days forward, we're still seeing that this pattern that the VIX has kind of been following here would suggest that the VIX could really spike up, which generally means that stock prices are going down. And of course, that would be quite negative. Here's our ADX, where we're just coming back above the 20 line and we're above the moving average and the green line's on top. So this is a positive trend currently. Here's our equity put call ratio. After really spiking up right before Thanksgiving, it is now starting to come back down. We'll have to see, is this a spike that we can work off of? And I don't have the longer term chart, but a lot of times when we spike, and then start coming back down, that gives support to the S&P 500 to go higher. But we've seen that a lot in 2022. The VIX is still coming down pretty strongly, and we are a little bit extreme negative with the VIX, and we, we've been that way for a couple of days now. This could suggest that maybe the VIX has fallen too far too fast, we, we could go down even more than this, but at some point, we might see the VIX start to turn and go back up. And of course, that would be generally meaning that stocks are going down. Here's our daily chart saying that we're still just a little bit above the pivot level. So that's positive, but we still have this 200-day moving average above where we're at right now. We bounced right off of that last summer and then had a pretty severe decline after that. If we even get to that level, are we going to be able to break through that or are we going to hit that level and then come back down? And then you can see at the bottom where volume was pretty anemic overall. Here's our moving average tree. We're still pretty much on top of the 2200 exponential moving average. 
The one right above it is the 200 simple moving average, and that's what most investors use. So that's the one we're really going to be keeping an eye on. New highs, new lows, they continue to hold up. Even with the slightly down day, we saw a little bit of an improvement with the new highs. That's helping our five period moving average to go higher. And we're flat to slightly higher with the 10 day moving average. Here's our FIB level. We're still above this FIB retracement level. So right now that's positive. If we start to go higher, we might run into more resistance at this. And again, it's really hard for me to see these numbers at about 4130 or so. If we come down, will this end up acting as support or will we break down through that and then head towards other support below where current prices are at? Here's a longer term look where we're kind of on top of this resistance level right now. We're just a little bit above it. This is a, we're at 4026, where this level is at 4020, roughly. So we're just six points above it. But it's hard <clears throat> to see this with the thickness of this line. And then I just wanted to bring out a longer term chart showing that we're getting close to the 50 week moving average. That is the same as a 200 day moving average. And this may be acting as overhead resistance. We want to see what would really be positive is, first of all, on the daily charts for us to get above the 200-day moving average and then close at that level. Another very positive sign could be on a weekly basis. So after next Friday's session, if we could actually close above this moving average as well. So what's our outlook for Monday? The technicals are positive and still showing improvement. But we are short-term overbought. We don't have any economic reports coming out on Wednesday. Wednesday, my goodness, Monday. But we have the whole list of geopolitical events. The markets are still really fixated on inflation and interest rates. But as I always say, some of these other things that are listed here could come into play, especially some of the lockdowns in China. That could have a real impact on their economy. They're trying to do some stimulus for that, but it could impact those companies that do business in China. So our scenarios not going with the down scenarios, other than the fact that we are short-term overbought, that could produce some weakness or some sideways action. We're going with the up scenario now because our technicals are pretty much looking positive. Our oscillators are positive. We've regained some moving averages. We're holding on to pivot and FIB retracement levels. One thing that's not really positive now is our sector rotation. We're not, we're not seeing a lot of strength there. We're seeing sideways to actually declining weakness. We'd like to see money going back into growth stocks because that's where the real movement comes from as far as the indexes are concerned. And we'll see if that gets sorted out in the coming week. And we're not going with the sideways trend because now the ADX is above 20 and it is positive. So our conclusion, the S&P, it, it is improving, even with the slightly down day, but we are short-term overbought. Intermediate term, it is showing some improvement. We're having a few of the overbought signals that I talked about. And we are still negative in the long term because we continue to be below that 200-day simple moving average. So thank you. Have a really nice weekend. As I keep saying, I'm, I'm. This will probably be the only video that I post. It's really hard for me to look at the screen for extended periods of time, and so I have to just keep that pretty minimal right now as this inner ear infection continues to run its course. So have a great weekend, and I will talk to you in the next video.